Okay, so we have our blade that we made yesterday for our draw knife. And now I've just been giving it a final sharpening with a carborundum stone. And remember that this blade had to be have some of the temper taken back out of it. It had to be reduced. When we quenched it in oil, we made it very hard. So to reduce that temper, I used my forge and I let the coals burn down to where they're just a glowing bed of coals. I put the knife inside in the coals, blade up like this, and watch the color as it rises through the blade. And what I'm looking for is a straw yellow color to reach the blade. And when that happens, I pull it out and at that point I've reduced the temper or made it not quite as hard. Then I'll take it out and do my final sharpening with both file and stone. And once we get to this point, we have a usable tool, but now what we want to do is we want to put a set of permanent handles on it. And we can, if we're in the woods and we're just carrying this, we can easily just take a couple of cut pieces of sapling, drill them out, or burn them out, either way, insert them on and pound them into place. And they'll work temporarily like that, but they'll be prone to split, prone to slip over time and things like that. I'm going to show you a way that you can make a more permanent type handle for this pretty easy with pretty common materials, things that you can buy very, very cheaply, keep on hand around your shop to make handles and things like that for something like this tool. Making your own tools is very, very satisfying and making the tools that you're doing woodworking and wood carving with in your blacksmith shop gives you a very good sense of self-reliance because you know that you can create the tools that you need to make other things. Now, we can test this draw knife without too much difficulty and I've already tested a little bit on this piece here so we'll turn this piece the other direction in this vise real quick and I'll demonstrate how this draw knife works on this piece of wood. <coughs> Again, I don't have to have handles on this necessarily to use it. And as you can see, I can use this tool as is to make my handles if I chose to do that for this tool itself very easily. And I can carve these down, got a knot right there, and I can carve these down to where I want them and then I can use these as handle material. And you can see that thing will take hog chunks off if I need it to. My vice is pretty weak here. But you can see this will hog off large chunks or it will take small shavings as well. And a draw knife is a very good shaping tool. You can see that's going to make a nice smooth handle material. Okay, so once we have our draw knife completed and we're happy with it, like I said, we could carry it like this, use it like this, or we could put handles on it that were just friction fit in the woods, or we could wrap the end of those handles with something to help keep them from splitting out like bank line or cordage. What I'm going to do is something a little bit more permanent than that, and I'm just going to cut 
thin wall copper pipe that's one inch in diameter and I'm going to fit it to these handles and then we'll carve the handles just a little bit neater with a knife and the knife that I'm going to use today is this Mora safety knife and this is a new knife we're carrying it at SRO but it has a blunt tip on the front of it and it's called the safe knife so that it's safe for kids so they don't poke themselves so easily with it but it's a very very sharp knife it's a nice small carving knife fits well in the hand and it's really good for sloyd or woodworking type tasks so we're going to use that today and we're going to trim our handles down i've left this area at the top here i didn't draw a knife that off about an inch and that's where i'm going to just trim down that area with push cuts on this green wood and this wood's a little bit green still I cut it quite a while ago, but it's still a little bit green. And I'll trim it down until I can fit those copper rings over the top of it. And I'll show you those copper rings here in just a second. And we'll put those copper rings over the top of this. Sometimes this works better if you pull the wood toward you and hold the knife stationary. It works better than trying to push cut sometimes, especially with greener woods like this. And I'll cut my rings first and then I'll just kind of fit it as I go and carve it until they fit over the top snug and then we'll seat it as a handle. And we'll go ahead and probably round this off a little bit as well. And this doesn't have to be exact at all. So once I've got this shoulder carved around this piece, and again, I'm not trying to make it perfect by any means, I'll check it for size, and if this slides over it fairly well, I'm okay with that because I'm going to pound it on there anyway with my mallet, just like this, and I'm going to pound it until it's even with the top, just like it is there. Now I'm going to do whatever I want to do, finish work wise to the bottom of the handle, which really is just going to boil down to chamfering it off so it doesn't split on anything when I bang it or if I bang it because I'm going to hammer the handle on here in a minute with my maul. And once I've chamfered the edge of this thing around a little bit and I can always dress it up after the fact as well but this is going to be good enough for crude use then I can take one side of my tool place it inside the hole on either side like this and hammer it down on the tool and now this ring will keep it from splitting out and it should have a pretty firm hold on there. What I did was when I drilled this hole down through the handle, I didn't drill it all the way. I drilled it with about a quarter of an inch step in there so that the spike would actually drive into the wood down there. And because you've got kind of a side bend there, you've got a little bit of friction side to side, very much like your hold fast. That's solid. That's not going anywhere. Now we'll put the other side on and we'll be good. And so, I'll just put a piece of stock right here with the plate up against my belly here. Get our draw knife. Got a little knot right there. 
can warp through. That is a very, very nice, great finishing knife. Really, really nice, fine shavings that thing will take. And I'm sure that we can get bigger shavings off as well very easily. Oh yeah. And get right down in there if we want to. Take some heavier pieces of wood off. Kind of cutting against the grain here on this one. We should turn that work around so that we're not cutting against the grain. Oh yeah, that is a fantastic tool. Folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I appreciate you joining me for these couple videos on how to forge and finish a draw knife project. I thank you for your views, I thank you for your support, I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.